workshop um, organized by OpenAI and AOI on university approaches to citizen science in a transition to open science, where we'll talk about institutional opportunities and challenges for creating an open and inclusive environment for research. Before we start, quickly some um, housekeeping rules. Um, so you're all participants, unless you speak, you're muted and your video is turned off, unfortunately, because we have a lot of participants. If you have any questions or comments about the presentations or the topics addressed, please use the Q&A box. So there is a special Q&A box for questions. This way we can keep track of the questions and all questions will be answered at Q&A time uh, after the, the presentations. If you have any technical issues or just want to say hello, you can of course use the chat box. This session is being recorded. Uh, recordings and slides will be made available through YouTube and Zenodo. We'll also upload them on our event page on OpenAir. And you will send, be sent a follow-up email uh, once they are available. So today we focus on citizen science as an enabler of open science. As you can see, we have a full program. Um, and without further ado, I would like to give uh, the word to uh, Pastora um, to give an introduction on this session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Thank you all for being there. Yesterday we had more than 200 participants. I hope you are all there this morning with us. Um, it's a pleasure for me to welcome you back to this joint workshop between the EUA and Open Air on citizen science. As, an, as Emily mentioned, yesterday we had a very interesting first session with a specific focus on citizen science at universities. We went to, uh, from a general overview given by Professor Muki Hakley from UCL to a very interesting discussion about opportunities and challenges of citizen science for and at the universities. And today we want to go beyond the university, beyond the institution itself, and to open the debate to a bigger scope. Uh, we'll talk about ecosystems and how they can foster citizen science practices um, and the relation with open science as well. And for that, our first panel is focused on citizen science at the scale of the city. Uh, we've chosen the city of Barcelona. Maybe you wonder why Barcelona. So first of all, uh, because of its research uh, ecosystem with eight universities in the city and also several research centers. It has also other agents that are involved in the daily life of the research in the city, such as hospitals, museums, schools, companies, citizens associations, and also the public administration. And in that sense, we can say that the science has been integrated as part of the culture of the city for around 20 years now. And secondly, because there's a solid background on citizen science initiatives in Barcelona. Many research groups work, are working on citizen science projects. And there's also a very interesting entity, uh, which is the Barcelona Citizen Science Office. That office was created by the City Council in 2012 with the mission of supporting citizen science in Barcelona by advising and promoting projects uh, as well as developing actions aimed at bringing citizens and research closer together. And for this session today, I'm very pleased to have with me a very good representation of this Barcelona citizen science ecosystem. And let me introduce you the, the three panelists. Uh, Josep Perelló, he is an associate professor in the Department of Fundamental Physics at the University of Barcelona. His research group focuses on citizen participation and arti artistic practices as an alternative way of doing science, and I'm quoting himself. For four years, he was the head of the science department at Ars Santa Monica, which is a cultural center for digital media in Barcelona. And he also worked in the, with the Barcelona City Council in the creation of that citizen science office I mentioned before. Then we have Isabel Ruiz Mayen. She is a senior researcher at the Laboratory of Urban Transformation and Global Change 
at the Internet Interdisciplinary Institute of the Universitat Oberta de Catalunya, the Open University of Catalonia. Isabel has a background in environmental science research and a proven ability to work across disciplines and with participatory research approaches in multicultural, con multicultural contexts. And last but not least, uh, we have also Diana Escobar. Diana is uh, responsible of the um, Citizen Science Office here in Barcelona and uh, of the Science and Innovation Program at the Institute of Culture of Barcelona of the Barcelona City Council. She has a background in biology, museology, and heritage management. And Diana has developed her professional activity in cultural projects in the public administration, such as the launching of the first zoological sound library in Spain. And since 2008, she has been leading different projects on citizens and technologies dissemination and cultural innovation through citizens' participation. So thank you very much. Uh, to the three of you for being here today with us. To start the session, I'm gonna ask you to give us a brief overview of your work and specifically of what um, of the one that's related with cities and science and also the cities. So Josep, the floor is yours if you wanna start. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So yes, thank you very much for this presentation, Pastora. And, and my idea was to briefly, shortly uh, explain you and show you uh, some of the projects that we have been doing, and, but also providing some context because I think that the context in these cases is very important. So I think that now you should be able to see my, my screen, I guess, right? So yes. the idea basically is that I want to briefly explain you a bit about some backdoors or the backstage in uh, open systems, which is our research group, which is a small, but we like to be a small. And I think that also in the terms of citizen science, especially in, in just moving and going a little bit beyond to the to the context of, uh, for instance, of, of the city. So the idea is also to work in a multidisciplinary way. So in the in the case there, in that case means that uh, we are not attached to any specific topic and we are not attached to any specific methodology, maybe. But uh, but what is more important is to address to some social concerns that are and that has some collectives or some specific groups that are really worried about. You no. Know? So the idea is more. Uh, trying to move forward in terms of multidisciplinarity or transdisciplinarity in, in, in this way. So, and, and not to run the projects to, uh, alone, but also to do that with other actors that are also present in the city context. Okay. So, in this sense, so I can just briefly explain you a little bit our experience in this sense, but uh, I would like to start also with a notion that is just also a bit wider than the notion of participation. I think that also citizen science, if we go to the city, if we go to a specific context, we need to talk about cooperation. So we don't need to, or we don't have to work um, specifically in the sense that, that uh, we are there, we are the experts and we go there and we are going to explore that field. Instead, we need to work together with the experts in the field that are already living in the city. So this means maybe policymakers, this might mean specific collective or many other actors that are already present in the city context. So at that level, so maybe as academics, maybe we are not the, the only experts. Okay, so there are many other experts or at least there are many other experiences that are very valuable. Okay, so I think that this is a very interesting starting point. Yeah? Joseph, sorry for interrupting you, sure, but sure. we are seeing your presentation as a, I think it's a speaker view and not the presentation mode. Oh, okay, um, sorry. But we are seeing the two slides. Um, okay, so. yeah, let me, sorry. Yeah. No, it's uh, fine. Because, let's try yeah, now. The first speaker in the mode. In the mode. Now? Now, now, thank you. Thank you, I didn't click one very important <laughs> uh, button. So as I said, so the, the idea is that to move forward to this idea of participation and also to insist that uh, being a researcher, being, being or coming from a university, we need to think in terms of cooperation. So there are many other actors that can uh, actively contribute to the contents and to the value of the research. No? So just to move forward, I want just to share some small projects like the ones here. So this is one single project that was uh, also started in a very different context than an academic context. So this was part of an exhibition 
uh, in, a, in a cultural center here in Barcelona that was working in climate and, and with other several institutions that you can see the logos below. So we just found that there was a key issue that it was not deeply explored enough. And we need the action of many other actors to make that possible. So in the sense that we were wanting to know better which are the NO2 concentration levels in Barcelona, because the regular explorations in this sense, the academic explorations, only cover only 300 points. And here we were able to cover uh, 700 and 800 points, for instance. No? So and to make that possible, we did that with the schools. OK, so we went to schools and we invite families to come out to their own schools and to run together and at the same time a kind of exploration of their own neighborhood and locate the specific um, spots where they really care about the NO2 concentration level. So this is the kind of approach that we like very much in that sense. I'm not going to, to the scientific part of it, but, but I think that it's very important to understand that that is not only a scientific endeavor. So it's something that also participants also expect that something can change based on the information and the data that we can collectively gather. No? So just moving forward to another one and just Pastora stop me when, when the, my time is finished. Uh, but uh, let me see if I'm able to, to switch. Yes, so also we like very much to talk about public space. So what I mean by public space. So a public space is, um, is, is a place that also can be understood as a, as a lab but uh, we prefer to talk about research in the wild. So let's move forward about this idea of constraining and restricting reality in the labs, but also go into the public space and better adapt our, in real conditions, some specific uh, experiments like the one here, which is a behavioral experiment, for instance, on, on, on climate action. No? So that, that's also a very important idea from my perspective. No? Like the idea is that the research needs to be also be reconsidered when you just move and you just go out from your, your, your own university. No? So for instance, in the case that you can see here, uh, we were also worried about the uh, violences in public space. And, and we did that with a theater company uh, and also with a design school and also with a group that we were able to identify which were the key issues about uh, gender, uh, gender perspective and gender perspective and violences in public space. No? And how to do that? So first of all, to define together the research, that's for sure. No? But also, is also to understand also, for, for instance, play, uh, spaces like the Science Biennale that maybe uh, Diana will explain later, is that a that, that big festival, a public festival, that this can be also a showcase to, to really make possible this kind of research and to go to the city and to do that in a much more natural way. No? So in this case was, was uh, this kind of studies and we were wanting to create the situation and also to study the reaction of people under the specific stories that were created specifically to this context. So another, another very important point is, is and related to open science is also, okay, so we have results. We can keep the results in the academy. Yeah, that's a possibility and we should do that. But also we need to also come back to some public spaces and explain the results of a specific experiments. No? So in that case, for instance, it was a question that was posed by a group of young people in, in L'Hospitalet, and they were just wanting to answer this general question, how would you react if you wake up one day and there is no water when you open, no, you, you, you just uh, go to the shower, for instance. No? So in a way or another, uh, so this was also related to a research that can has it's rigor, but also they were wanting also to express publicly the results, no? And we also take the opportunity to take a, a to make a to make a partnership with a library to also to find spaces to express the results in public space, no? So to briefly explain what is the result of this joint research. Okay. Another possibility, and I will finish here, is also to explore mobility. Yeah. So there are many applications that are also able. Uh, enable us to, to use, for instance, Google no? and, and to take data from Google, Google or from Twitter or from many other places to study mobility. But also being a scientist also believe that it is also very interesting to also study mobility in a specific conditions, how to do that. Okay, so to invite a specific collectives to study mobility in their own neighborhood. Okay, so as researchers here, the challenge is to enable that to 
coordinate that and also to find the right partners to make that possible. No? So, and to define finally together the, 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 the research question that we were wanting to, to explore. No? So this is one example that also, this is a poster that was created by a school and also we, they already identify very important difficulties to also to reach their own school because there is a, uh, a big wall, which is a big railway station and also with uh, uh, there and they are not able to cross that the big barrier that you can see here uh, and they were also trying to explore other possibilities than some of them they were not legal indeed no? so so also uh, we should also understand that also is mobility might be an issue and we are very interested in as scientists but also we need to also understand that all the participants like the persons that consciously participate in the in the experiment for instance in that case also they take some back home message and also be able to identify some difficulties in their own neighborhood and to be able to go to the municipality and say look there is a problem these people wants to go there and they don't have an easy path to do that no? so so these are more or less the big challenges that i think that we have here uh, in in front in, in in our table when we talk about it in science and in cities in a city context and i think that barcelona here uh, it has been also for us very productive in that sense but i would like also to insist that it could not be possible uh, without the collaboration and the participation of many other actors out of the university space no so so otherwise that big effort would be simply impossible no? i would stop here thank you very much Josep. thank you very much and now we move on to isabel Isabel, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pastora. Uh, thanks for the invitation to, to participate in this roundtable. I completely share many of the thoughts that uh, Josep uh, has uh, shared with us. Um, briefly, uh, I will explain you the, the, the context of my work. I'm, as Pastora said, I'm working at the Urban Transformation and Global Change Laboratory at the Open University of Catalonia that it's called uh, Turba Lab. We are a collective of, um, of researchers from, from different backgrounds, from environmental sciences like me, but also economy, geography, humanities. And we are interested in, in investigating the interlinkages between a variety of processes, actions, and flows that produce and transform the cities we live uh, in. And uh, we have three research lines, uh, one of them, um, I believe in one of them, that it's about co-creation. And um, I'm particularly interested in um, examining the processes of uh, collaborative production of knowledge uh, in both digital and non-digital contexts um, with a focus on transformation and social innovation. So citizen science is, is uh, a key part of, of uh, this uh, research line, but also uh, related practices like uh, science and sustainability education activities at schools. We are also exploring grassroots initiatives on uh, climate resilience and adaptation in uh, informal learning context uh, within the city of Barcelona, uh, the participation of citizens in formal decision making processes related to the climate emergency, also in Barcelona. And uh, as I said, uh, other citizen science initiatives and processes both in and outside uh, schools. And in the particular case of citizen science, we are less, we can, we are less interested in exploring the mainstream approaches in which citizens are um, invited to contribute to the scientific research projects that are designed by professional researchers and in which they often and are engaged as data collectors because, well, this kind of projects have, has been, have been uh, widely explored and their benefits in terms of win-win solutions have been also widely documented. Instead, we are more interested in analyzing what we call tran uh, transformative learning uh, initiatives in which uh, the aim is to um, co-produce the research project with the researchers and other societal actors and uh, the output, it's not so much focused on the scientific data, but on building critical and reflective thinking capacities among the citizens. Uh, 
um, to provide them with a meaningful voice in the scientific practice. So I'd like to share with you one, one of these, the projects that we have been evaluating um, that was uh, conducted in a secondary school in Moulins de Rey, that is a city located in the, the metropolitan area of Barcelona. This project was led by a French association called L'Atelier de Jours Avenir within a, and the Nouveau Commodity Science Program, that is a French, uh, um, uh, the French, uh, French government uh, program of the Ministry of Science there. And uh, in this project in Moulins, well, it started because there were three students that uh, participated in a video contest and asked the following question in the video, how do the colors of the walls of the school influence educational performance? One of the, the members of this association saw the video at uh, internet and contact the school because they thought that it was a very interesting question. And they found that the question was a result of the students' concern about the poor conditions of the school buildings. And also because they perceived that the students uh, were not so uh, enthusiastic about their classes. So they asked themselves, maybe it's about is because the colors of the walls are gray or white, no? While when we were at the primary school, all the walls were painted with red and other uh, no, living colors. So the mediator of this uh, association um, guided these and other students that were interested in, uh, in the topic in a uh, in conducting, uh, um, in articulating their questions and invited two neuroscientists from a Dutch university who were specialized in the study of attention behavior. So together these students and the researchers designed a research project that they call investigating how colors influence learning. They were able to review and discuss previous experiments on the topic um, they designed their, their own experiments based on that evidence. They conducted their experiments at, their, at the school with their peers. They analyzed the data, the data, of course, always in collaboration with the researchers and reflect on the results. So um, such collaborative process resulted in, in a students' improved self-confidence and collaboration skills. And also they understood how science is done in terms of its ambiguity, its normativity, the uncertainty, the frustration, the complexity that are part of the scientific process and that are necessary to achieve accurate research results. No? And these views about science, we, we documented how this, the students' views about science change from seeing science as a, as a normative issue no? from a from a, an exploration, a, a process of exploration. But um, not only the students change their frames of reference, references regarding science, also the researchers involved in the project. And this is, I think, the key result you know, for this, uh, in terms of this, this workshop. The scientists, at, at the researchers involved at the beginning were very hesitant in terms of participating in the project because of the time, the time that they had to invest in, uh, in the project and the returns for their academic career. And um, at the end, they, become, they became like advocates of this approach, convinced that it can contribute to produce more socially relevant research. So they got a lot of inspiration from the discussions with the students. They detected gaps in their fields of research and give uh, space no, to, to explore new ones. So I would like to finish by highlighting that um, the key potential of such co-produced approach to citizen science that some scholars call civic science uh, is high and uh, can contribute and strengthen the research of the universities and also the research of research centers um, and it's highly linked to the open science approach that is now being promoted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Isabel. Thank you, Isabel and, and Josep, for those two 
uh, nice examples of research groups working with citizens and other stakeholders, as you mentioned, um, having also the city uh, as an actor uh, of the science and the research performed. I will pass now the floor to Diana Escobar, who to know a bit more uh, how the Barcelona City Council is, is promoting citizen science. Diana, your turn. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much, Pastora, for inviting the office uh, to, to, to share our experience. Uh, as you mentioned, it is a, a, an office uh, that is uh, fostered and uh, supported by the Institute of Culture of the City Council since 2012. And uh, as you all already mentioned, uh, Josep was in the, in the beginning, and he could explain a little bit more uh, about uh, the start uh, process of the of the office, just to say that the, the office is supported by the public administration in, in in terms of the city council. But as uh, as it started, it started because there were five uh, science city projects that were very uh, um, involved in in fostering uh, citizen science in the city, uh, and they created at that moment a community of practice. Uh, from that uh, five projects, uh, there were some uh, of the uh, settled in a university, uh, three, three of five, and um, uh, they were a, a good uh, starting point uh, to present uh, the initiative to the Directorate of Creativity and Innovation at that moment and the Cultural Institute, who of course uh, was involved in uh, uh, yeah, some uh, um, innovation, uh, culture, uh, and uh, different uh, strategies. So the Citizen Science Office uh, seemed at that moment that was a really a strategic program for the directorate. Since then, uh, and it is 2012, uh, we have been growing. And from these five initial, uh, and still uh, they are still there in the office uh, projects, we are now uh, 20 different projects, around 20 different projects. Um, now, from that uh, 20 different projects, eight of them are directly led by a different universities research group, but some others uh, need and has to uh, work uh, with, uh, with uh, universities, also with uh, different uh, research groups at, at universities. From that uh, 20 different projects, there are so many variety of, of topics and, and, and uh, research fields. Mm, some of them are carried out by also by, by research centers, also by universities, as I mentioned, but also by social entities. That's, it's, a, it's a really bit new in, in, in that uh, last phase. Some of them um, are funded by the UE, uh, EU, uh, sorry, and some of them have expanded beyond their, their local scale. Um, we, as, as, a, as an office, uh, didn't carry out the projects. The projects are carried out by their, uh, the researchers or the entities or, or whoever is, uh, is leading it. But we uh, try to, to connect, uh, our mission is to connect uh, research with uh, citizens. Because I think, and we have a lot of uh, times of discussion of it with uh, Giuseppe, for example, uh, citizens are everywhere but are nowhere. So the difficulty is really to, to, to to get closer to, to citizen. And I think from the uh, public administration perspective, that should be our, our role. Yeah, just connecting and, and, and facilitating all, all the processes. So that means that the office is really open to, to society in broad sense, so bro, both research uh, groups and civil organization and local bodies if they are interested and neighborhood associations also. Uh, we, we, we think we, these 20 projects and, and all, the, all the agents involved uh, create a, a really powerful and diverse community. And in terms of action, was, what we do is supporting, advising and developing uh, pilot projects that's especially relevant when uh, uh, new projects are, are evolving. Uh, that's the, 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 the moment now. We also try to connect uh, the projects uh, with new audiences and we uh, help them to disseminate, uh, and we do it uh, in, in, in both uh, senses. One uh, sense is mediating, this mediation role between civil association entities with the researchers, and also facilitating the participation in major city events, as, men, as uh, Joseph mentioned before, the biennial, for example, city, uh, city and science uh, 
is one, one of the examples or the science festival, the annual science festival of the city also. And uh, these, these are like, you know, um, uh, places where you, uh, you with, uh, with um, sorry, where uh, projects can explain what they do and, but also to explain the results they uh, have been uh, gathering uh, for a, for a, for a uh, period of time. Another thing we do is to search alliances with other local agents, and that uh, that is thanks to to sorry a little bit um, to a networking a permanent networking with different agents of the city that uh, that means civic and cultural centers network the uh, education community or public libraries, but also with some municipal areas like the Barcelona Open Data Office, the Ecology, Urban Planning and Mobility Department, and the Barcelona City uh, City Health Agency. We also uh, try to foster mutual learning because as a community, and, and it was at the start uh, of the, at the beginning of the, uh, of the office, it was a very, very powerful thing. Uh, all this experience of the project this is really a big knowledge capital. So it is very interesting that they can uh, go, get together and exchange what they are doing because uh, I think uh, the experience was one of the biggest uh, uh, issues to, to, to to, 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 to share. That uh, also, we, all, all, of, of all of these, we, have, we organize two different uh, transversal programs, or cross cutting programs. What is um, citizen child at schools? We organize it uh, with the local education authority. And for example, in uh, this year, instead of the, the COVID situation, there are a different research uh, projects working with two or three uh, school groups each in a 15 hour schedule on different topics and, and there are for, from different approaches. Um, and what we want to, to, to do with this program is to seek and raise uh, awareness among teachers and students and, and make them reflect about the importance of playing an active role and having critical spirit in relation to specific challenges and consequently uh, being able to taking action, getting involved. Um, we have also another program that citizen science in the neighborhood in which different residents in different areas of the city uh, carry out a, a, a research project. Some of them uh, were shown by, by Josep before. Uh, there are many others. And um, all the projects that want to uh, participate in our programs uh, has to uh, subscribe the Office 10 Principles of Good Practice. And it is expected, whether it is an university research group or a, a social entity, that the project searches uh, social impact and solutions uh, to improve uh, people's uh, quality of life. It, 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 it doesn't uh, matter what is the field of, 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 of uh, working. As a result, we have been a, a large part of the districts of the city and we have involved more or, more or less 13,000 local residents and uh, school children until now. What have we learned? Well, that along these years, some projects uh, have approached the office in, in terms of uh, a reference in the field in, in the city, but not, not just the researchers came to, to, to the office. They, they were, um, and, and more in, 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 the, in the last years, and it's more common that some uh, social entities have uh, contacted the office with specific uh, concerns and demands that uh, should be investigated in order to provide scientific evidence for policy makers. That is um, a big issue uh, in terms of being a public administration. It's a guy, the case, for example, for, of a civic organization that wanted uh, to monitor biodiversity in a green area in their neighborhood that was submitted to re, uh, urban replanning and um, and more recently, there is a neighborhood association uh, concerned with the sound and noise impact in public spaces that uh, originated a, a new uh, project that's uh, based on a sound map, for example. But there is also uh, ch challenges. Um, I, I think it, the, the, the big one is real, uh, real citizen long-term engagement. And it's particularly difficult with there are projects that are monitoring in long term uh, or long data series, for example. Um, it's not just a, a pop-up activity. And in that cases, there are other cases that are really very good in, in, this, in terms of uh, just uh, focusing uh, during a, 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 a concrete uh, um, space of time. But for those other projects that there is a really uh, not so easy to, to, to assure the uh, citizens' uh, engagement and participation. 
And um, for me, the other challenge is to foster real changes or solutions applying uh, uh, to citizens or communities concerned on demand. Because if the project is uh, raising uh, uh, scientific uh, evidence, uh, you present it to the uh, policy makers, but there is no action uh, uh, after uh, that will be generate frustration. And I think I leave it here. And if there are, there are questions, we can go further. Thank you. Thank you very much, Diana. Thank you very much for this approach that we are not so used no, to having this overview from the policymaker. Um, and thank you, the three, for, for these different um, clues, ideas. Now, so we have 10 more minutes for, for questions, and there are some different questions um, in the chat. Uh, don't be shy if you have any other questions. Uh, um, please go ahead and, and I will ask the, the, the panelists. But let me start, um, because yesterday we were discussing about the challenges and Diana, now you were ending with some challenges from uh, the point of view of the, of the city council. Yesterday we were discussing about the challenges um, at the institutional level, at the university level. Um, and you were pointing out some different ideas how to solve them. Uh, but I want to ask you if you have any recommendation, any specific recommendation in order to promote citizen science, whether in your institutions or, or at the city level. And, and related to that, um, Sofia Ifantidou also asked for some good practices uh, for attracting citizens' attention and the connection uh, between them and the research projects. Wanna start, Josep? Yeah. Um, um, yeah, so I'm just, I was just reading the questions as well, sorry. <laughs> no, so yeah, so I think that uh, it is important that, uh, that we, we just uh, go deeper in this sort of collaboration. I, just to have another consideration, for instance, with the COVID crisis, no? So we have managed to work together the very different entities and, and holding uncertainty in many spaces, no? So I think that for citizen science, that's a really nice uh, uh, kind of way of thinking how we can move forward, no? So first of all, maybe institutions or policy makers must live more in, in this context of uncertainty okay and on the other side so being scientists also we miss, must be much more adaptive and much more worried about the social impact no so these are the kind of connections that i think that we have on the table and that's the big challenge in my opinion no so so i, I want to leave the space to isabel and diana but that, i would say that this is perhaps the most important thing no? thank you Jeff. isabel yeah, I, I completely agree that um, uh, we should open more spaces for uh, conversation, dialogue, to strengthen this collaboration. I think that we we need to change the focus from from uh, from this unidirectional um, view, no, from research, the research centers or universities to the society, but also no, open the other channel. And, um, and create this mutual learning process that uh, also Diana was referring to. So we can also listen what um, citizens are asking or what, what, are they, uh, the, what are their concerns, their needs that they usually uh, are managing through associations at the neighborhood level or uh, other kind of organization. So creating these spaces for uh, dialogue, starting with the, with the dialogue, instead of uh, thinking only on uh, providing from the research centers projects in which they can engage in. No? I think that this is also one of the, the ways to, to go forward. Thank you, Isabel. Diana. Well, um, uh, good questions. L let me uh, tell you uh, briefly uh, an, an experience here in Barcelona. Uh, and, it, and it has to do with uh, the impact of, uh, of citizen science, of what uh, citizen science uh, could uh, or can do in, in, in a community. Uh, we have uh, uh, in Barcelona, well, not, not we, but it's, it's, it's a research center who's uh, working uh, on uh, microplastics in the, in the, in the beach. Of course, it is a, is a local program, but it's a global program because they are working 
in, 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 a, in a planetary scale. Uh, well, as we started um, uh, with a project in, 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 the, in the neighborhood uh, beside the, the, the beach, that's La Barceloneta, of course, they just were already working there with schools. But uh, the difference was uh, when uh, we went there and tried to uh, implement this uh, uh, citizen science at the neighborhoods program. It was uh, one of the first projects we we uh, we put there in the in the neighborhood. That there was uh, Joseph also there at that moment. And um, what uh, we uh, made at the moment was uh, to involve more agents of the of the neighborhood in that project, not just the research center. And the, and the schools that were already working there, but all uh, other uh, agents. Um, Barcelona is a very special neighborhood with a, with a strong uh, social and community uh, approach, you know. So uh, the, the result is that uh, because we were there and we tried to start to work with the civic center or cultural center in, 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 the, in the neighborhood, the cultural center made um, a call to so many different uh, social uh, agents in the city. And I'm, I'm talking about the scuba divers, the artisans, uh, the, the, the fishermen, for example, you know, and um, because they uh, wanted to um, in, in, uh, incorporate the project that is uh, micro watching, uh, microplastics watching, to, to the real life of the, of, the, of the neighborhood. As a result, they constitute a board that is called Plastic Zero, that means uh, plastic is you were in, in, in Catalan. And um, each um, main festival or uh, uh, activity in the, in the neighborhood, they went there and they put their banners with the microplastic uh, uh, project there. And they, uh, um, uh, they turned the, the project in, in, a, in, a, in a community motto, you know. I think it's a, it's a big uh, um, effect on, um, as, as maybe as uh, Josep also talked about the, uh, the water project, that means it's involving the community and not just in, in research doing, that is just a part of the, of the thing, but in uh, changing uh, the, the, the way of approaching a, a concern or a problem or whatever. No? Thank you, Diana. As we have just two minutes left, let me just combine three of the questions that are uh, related to the three different actors we, we, we have here, citizens, researchers, and, and policymakers. So um, I will ask you the, these three questions combined into one, and I will ask you for your short, brief answer. So on the one hand, Katia Egorova asks, how do we how do we deal with the expectations of the citizens engaged in um, these projects? Um, also, Tiberius Igna uh, asked how much citizen science also contributes to the education of the researchers. And last but not least, um, it's just let me, Reina Camacho asked also how do we uh, engage the policymakers uh, to within this uh, citizen science ecosystem. So you said, you start. Yeah. So our approach here is not to start the project alone. It's that simple as that. No. So for instance, if you are talking about learning because you are working with the schools, so you need to have the schools there because uh, they also need to see the potential of participating in these kind of projects. No, it's not because you are just selling them a, a very cool, nice material for running inside the school. You know? So it's something more sophisticated, I would say. No? And, uh, and they must see a benefit inside their curricula. No? So otherwise, it's not, maybe not that useful. No? And on the other side, I would say also that, and we are already exploring this in a project that is called COACT, is that we are building a kind of, a, let's say, a knowledge coalition, which are a set of entities that are, have the potential to transform the results into a specific policies or into specific actions no? that, uh, that are also already inside the project at the beginning. Okay, so that's very important not to have them not to wait until the results you have on the table, but also to when you design the research itself, you must include at least to keep a dialogue with them. No? So that's really important. No? And we like also to talk about a, a lot uh, in terms of participants of co-researchers. So they must be feeling that, that they are part of this endeavor. Otherwise, it's just uh, 
they will just provide data, which I think that, uh, that they will be happy to do it once, but not twice. Thank you very much, Josep. Isabel, what about this education of the researcher itself, doing this uh, type of research in a different way? Uh, yeah, well, as I said in the, in the example, uh, with the example I showed, uh, the researchers participating in the project change completely, completely their frameworks of uh, references regarding how to do research. I think that this kind of uh, projects on citizen science, just the connection, uh, the collaboration that they can establish with the citizens, whoever they are, students or uh, neighbor, neighbors or uh, other actors, is, a, is an added value because, as you know, in many disciplines, the scientists and the researchers are used to, to work uh, inside the universities or research centers with a uh, uh, few uh, opportunities to, to engage with society. And of course, science is made through the curiosity and through, the, through creativity. So engaging and collaborating with the citizens is a source of creativity that, of course, with, uh, will uh, improve the, the research process and uh, also the, the way of understanding science. So there is, there is impact and there is, uh, there are, there is academic uh, evidence on, uh, on that already published. Thank you very much, Isabel. So Diana, the question from the <laughs> political uh, policy makers, how do we engage them? How, how uh, whether we can create other citizen science offices in other cities in Europe, what do you think? That's, that's a big question. And for, for our side, it is. Because uh, I think um, um, the, the, we are a, a neutral, or we are supposed to be a neutral agent because uh, we are in the, in the, we are the, the someone said someone uh, the, like we are the, the the home of everyone yeah but but of course uh, it is very diffi difficult to involve uh, policymakers in terms of uh, to be the the part of the pro the problem and try to be part of the solution so in in terms of being part of the solution you have to recognize you are part of the problem and sometimes it is not so easy um, so I would really like to to know uh, uh, best practices in in in, in, the, uh, in, in these terms. But I think uh, the the crucial thing is when when uh, as as both uh, Josep and, and Isabel said, you have to involve uh, a citizen in the in the in the beginning, or um, more more strong, it should be the beginning in the citizens. That is the the case of of Barcelona uh, sound map, for example. So the citizens participants were just concerned with uh, noise and there's a problem, and we have to go to the policymakers and all of them. Uh, are changing also their approach and it's just not a problem but it is, it is a, a heritage a sound heritage for them also now and they're discovering in terms of of a sound dimension their 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 spaces no? so thank you very much i'm afraid we should leave it here this very interesting discussion thank you very much josep isabel diana uh, for being today with us and i pass the the floor to to emily thank you Hello, um, thank you very much for this wonderful panel, very interesting and uh, perhaps if uh, Josep, uh, Diana, Isabel, Pastora have a minute, or you could have a look at some unanswered questions in, in Q&A and answer them. Uh, and there was also a question in the chat from Elias uh, about the impact of COVID-19, how can you do uh, citizen science in times of pandemic? So everyone, uh, panelists and also attendees, please, if, if you have any recipes, how to, to do citizen science in times of pandemic, please uh, write in a chat. Uh, and uh, moving on with uh, our program, uh, our second session for today uh, is a open air session. And it's about uh, citizen science enabling open science, open air schools project. Uh, and uh, we have uh, Eugenia Kipriotis from uh, Elena Germaniki Agogi and um, Andreniki Pavlidou from Athena Research Center, who will uh, share with us their experiences with uh, open science schools projects. So over to you, Eugenia and Andreniki. Hello from us too. I will now start sharing my screen uh, for our presentation. 
Um, do you see it now? Yes. Sir. Okay. Great. So thank you, Irina. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to, to show what we have done. Um, my name is Evgenia Kipriotis uh, from Athens, Greece. Um, I'm working for the R&D department of uh, EA, or as uh, Irina very well pronounced, this is a big private school in, in Athens, Greece. And uh, in the framework of open air, we have undertaken the task of the citizen science activities. Um, we have uh, created a very uh, concrete uh, strategy of uh, uh, developing and implementing the citizen science activities in school environments, cooperating with teachers and students, and we have come up with three major activities. The first one is the school seismograph network, where we gather seismic data from several seismographs that we have installed in, uh, in schools in Europe. The second one is the Open Schools Journal for Open Science. This is a scientific journal following the, the processes of a proper scientific journal, but it hosts, it publishes um, articles written by students and is also addressed to students. And last, the bringing a Nobel Prize uh, physics to the classroom where we give uh, access to data from big research centers in Europe to students and teachers. Nonetheless, all these three activities have been very um, closely cooperated with uh, open air infrastructures. Uh, Androniki? Yes. So uh, all the things that you will hear in this session, uh, they connect with open air. And how is this performed? So you ha we have a new journal. So all new articles are assigned with a DOI. So the information for each article and the journal is indexed on open air through the provide product. And then you have the complete metadata collection, like the title, the authors, the date, the data they use, the outcomes, the results available uh, through the Open Air Research Graph on Zenodo, Open Air Explore, so you can really find them very easily. You can just search. All these also includes that we, we of course, respect the FAIR principles, so students get to know all this process from scratch, from start, all the way to, to having something public with their name. So this is very, very important for us and for them. Exactly. Thank you, Androniki. So let's break down uh, these three initiatives to, to see the real content. So the first one is the School Seismograph Network, or as we like to call it, the Seismic Data Journey. What we're doing here is that we have uh, installed 61 seismographs in schools in Europe. We have uh, placed a focus on the Eastern Mediterranean part, which is actually the, the area most prone to earthquakes in Europe. Our um, network extends from Israel to Azores, including not only areas with uh, uh, active um, uh, seismic um, activity, but also with volcanic activity. Therefore, you see there Azores and also some seismographs in Greek islands like Sandorini or Nisiros that they are very uh, popular for their seismic activity. How is this happening? So we either uh, the researchers, they are either um, express the interest for a, a specific uh, location or a teacher who is interested in the field of seismology makes a request for the installation of a seismograph in their schools. We then, uh, in cooperation with the researchers uh, working on this activity, um, explore uh, the, 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 the importance of this area and we decide whether it will be beneficial for the network to install there a seismograph. Once this, this is approved, we install the seismographs ourselves in this school, in the specific school. We connect it with a computer which feeds the researchers with seismic data 24 seven. At the same time, there is a feed for citizens 24 seven. If someone uh, wants to have as a citizen, a very uh, brief uh, idea of what is happening, they can visit the network and they can get a visualization of the waveforms happening at any date they choose. 
but what the, 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 the researchers are getting is their raw data. And this raw data is in SAC files. This is a format that it's not easily readable or editable by normal computers uh, as the ones we are using. And here is where OpenAir is coming again. Yes. So, yes, thank you. So what we thought is, okay, let's make it easy for people and for students, of course, and teachers to use that information, that data. So we used a national infrastructure that we have here in Greece that is in progress, which is named Helix. It's the Hellenic data service where you can host data. And furthermore, with the lab product service that it offers, you can run code. You can, they have a server, you can run a code, you can upload a Python script, for example, and use it over your data and get outcomes and you get it real and live. So it's very, very important now. So we managed somehow to make simp to simplify the process to make it more uh, convenient. So what is this process all about? So as Evgenia said, you have the raspberries, you have the hardware that get, gives you uh, uh, the SAC files. And then we use Helix. We create an account, of course. It is approved. And you start a server in, uh, on Helix environment. And you, as I said, upload the Python script and you run Jupyter Notebooks, which is very, very uh, familiar uh, all over the community. And you get your graphs, your seismic activity, insights, everything. So if I want to conclude everything, we start from schools, teachers, students as citizens. In our, in our case, we continue with providing the tools from a national infrastructure, from a well-known software, and then we upload the information and we'll make it public, available on Zenodo and, of course, on all open-air services. Great. Thank you, Androniki. As a matter of fact, uh, back in October 2019, before the COVID crisis, we have organized here in Greece a Hack Week, an event where we have asked from teachers and students to cooperate in order to develop an early warning uh, application using Python programming language. Uh, what we have provided them with was the data from five big earthquakes that have taken place in Greece from three different seismic stations, seismographs. Um, in order, again, to facilitate them, uh, we have transferred these, uh, these types, the SAC files, into types that could be easily uh, readable from uh, computers that one can find in average uh, school computer labs. Um, and that made their life much easier. Um, so let's move to the second initiative, that of the journal. Um, when we were uh, working on our strategy of introducing citizen science in, uh, in schools, uh, we realized that there was a part missing uh, when t students were, um, were seeing themselves as scientists. And what, that was the part of publishing their work. And therefore, we have developed a journal, the Open Schools Journal for Open Science. This is an international scientific journal from students to students. As I said, in this journal, they can uh, provide, they can publish the work they have implemented, the research work they have implemented in class via school projects. The journal so far over the last couple of years has been quite popular and we are happy to say that we have 241 active registered users. 141 of them are authors that have provided uh, uh, content, and 100 of them are scientists and professors that are, are working as reviewers for the journal. So far, we have published 13 issues with 244 articles, scientific articles from students and posters. Additionally, using again the open air infrastructures, all these articles can also be found on a community on Zenodo, following all the metadata that Androniki mentioned earlier in order to make them uh, more accessible and easily traceable. And moving to the last uh, initiative is the Nobel Prize Physics on Zenodo. So what we have done in this initiative is that we have taken advantage of the outreach programs of big um, 
centers in Europe, right? Uh, like the Virgo experiment or the experiment, uh, the experiments going on on CERN, and we have developed um, educational content using this data that can be used in class by uh, teachers and students. F uh, by publishing this content on Zenodo, we can have an easily access to the views and the downloads of each material, um, having an insight of how much and which of these are used in classroom, in real classroom conditions. Um, as I said, we have developed a strategy from the very beginning in order to select and to develop these initiatives. And um, we were very happy when we have seen how welcome all these activities have been from students and teachers, how eager they were in every step, in the step to have access to data, in the step of analyzing the data, in the step of publishing their outcomes. But what did come as a surprise for all of us working in this task was a good practice example. Last year, there was a new discovery that was published in our journal, and that was a discovery of an exoplanet. A, a team from a Greek school in Athens, you can see their names uh, on the top part of the slide, they have actually made a, a discovery, a discovery of an exoplanet that was, whose characteristics were analyzed for the very first time in our journal. So imagine the impact of such an action on the lives and on the confidence of these students, how uh, close they feel to the real research happening and what an impact it will also have to them if you think that these students, these school students will be the next generation of scientists and the future responsible citizens that we want them to uh, believe in the evidence-based opinion. So before leaving, uh, we would like to we would like you to um, remember that citizen science and education does have an impact, a strong effect, because it helps students firstly to get familiarized with science and the open science fair principles and rules and procedures, as Androniki from the very beginning explained. It helps the mapping of the university and the research environment into school environments. So we see the bridges uh, built there. We see the students engaging in scientific reasoning, which in the long run will save them as responsible citizens. We see that we can spark students' interest and the understanding of the scientific uh, content and knowledge. And last but not least, we expose the students to the use of the tools and the language of science in their lives, not only when uh, implementing these activities, but in their lives as a whole. Thank you very, very much. I hope we were on time. Um, are there any questions for Androniki or myself? Thanks a lot, Evgenia and Androniki. Thank you. Uh, uh, I don't see any questions, but I see Valentina's hand is up. So I'll, I'll let Valentina talk and uh, hope she'll ask a question. Um, and you'll have to unmute yourself, Valentina. OK, then maybe um, it was by mistake. Uh, so then please, if you have questions, there uh, types them in a QA and a uh, and um, Evgenia and Andreniki will be happy to collaborate with uh, your school initiatives. Uh, and this journal is open to everyone and uh, articles could be published in uh, any language. Uh, so that's really cool for collaborations. Uh, and uh, moving on to our last part uh, of the program. Uh, uh, when you registered for this workshop, we asked uh, to identify whether you would like to give a lightning talk. Uh, and uh, we receive uh, many more requests that we could handle. So we uh, could invite just uh, four five short five minutes talks. Uh, and we posted uh, summaries of uh, other 
interest in citizen science experiences on the workshop page here. So our first speaker today is uh, Katarina Zuru, and um, she will share with us uh, academia permitting society through citizen science, use cases of engagement in higher education. So over to you, Katarina. Hello, good morning. Uh, from Greece to Greece, uh, within an international uh, approach, uh, a, a very um, warm thank you to EUA and to Open Air for organizing uh, this, uh, this today webinar. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation and for giving us even a, a very short slot. It is enough uh, for us. So I'm Katerina Zuru, head of web to learn uh, services uh, company in, in Greece and participant in an uh, EU uh, funded project, INOS. INOS is about the integration of open and citizen science into active learning approaches in higher education. It's a consortium of five universities and uh, uh, a company and LIBER, the, the network of academic libraries in Europe. The scope of INOS is to modernize higher education curricula through open, open and citizen science and to upskill um, higher education academic and library staff and students through the engagement in citizen science practices. There is a range of activities within this uh, European uh, funded uh, project. I will only emphasize uh, one, uh, which is a study we conducted and which is now uh, publicly available on academia permitting society through citizen science, use cases of engagement in higher education. We wanted to analyze the position of universities in open and citizen science and uh, with respect to open knowledge and innovation. So basically we, we asked um, the following um, questions. The first is how universities currently perform in citizen science activities, which is the untapped potential there, where, uh, I mean, where there is opportunity for more involvement and which are the ways universities can cater to the needs of citizen participation in science for society. So this open access uh, study has been conducted on this very, uh, with the outline of the methodology I will describe uh, quickly now. We screened more than 100 activities. This, uh, to do this, we, ha we have adopted a, a typology. I go uh, through this uh, very quickly. We, we had uh, dimensions of the typology such as, such as the type of activity borrowed by the societized typology, the role of university staff, the format of the citizen science activity, the open access degree, the citizen science approach, the ethical and legal considerations. We identified 65 cases relevant to this typology and we showcased 20 of them. This analysis led us to the release of recommendations for higher education institutions in the form of actionable, actionable guidelines, because one of the concerns of universities partners of INOS, but also in general is, okay, now what? How could we move on with the uh, analysis done? So we identified uh, guidelines in, uh, in, in, uh, in the form of what to do action points uh, with the aim to raise awareness in citizen enhanced open science. We want to call it like that, citizen enhanced open science, because we very much believe as well as you into the connection, the combination of open and citizen science with the ultimate uh, goal to better connect academia to society. And these recommendations that we released, we offered them in the shape of um, infographics to make them more uh, catchy, if I'm allowed to use this term, to teaching and library staff that uh, wasn't fully aware of the citizen science um, uh, umbrella activities. 
So that was my talk. Uh, you're kindly invited to have a look at Inos project and in, more importantly, get in touch with us. We'll be very delighted to engage with you. This is the range of activities of Inos. And thank you very much for your time. Thanks a lot, Katerina. Um, our next speaker today uh, is uh, Luis Alberto Nunes from Universidad Industrial do Santander. So from Greece to Colombia. And uh, over to you, Luis. Uh, and uh, it's very early in the morning for Luis. So thanks a lot for joining us. So. That's OK. That's OK. <clears throat> uh, thanks a lot for the, for the invitation. OK. I will, uh, I will show you uh, an, uh, an experience that we have been working on for, for the last uh, six years. And uh, I'm talking on behalf of La Conga Physics, which is an uh, Erasmus uh, project. Uh, uh, for us, uh, we are a group of students, mainly uh, pre-graduate student, uh, students uh, from uh, Universidad Industrial de Santander. And this is a group of outreach, uh, an astronomer uh, club, which is uh, becoming an astroparticle uh, uh, research group under my guidance. Where are we? We are in the eastern part of Colombia, in the middle of the mountain, one of the branch of the Andes that uh, comes into, into Colombia, across Colombia, and then goes uh, into Venezuela. We are a public departmental university, around uh, 20,000 uh, pre-graduate studies and 1,000 of graduate. And uh, a, this is what we've been uh, working for a while uh, with, uh, we call RACIMO. RACIMO is uh, the, the acronym of uh, uh, monitoring, I mean, uh, net, uh, red, uh, I forgot. <laughs> okay, the, the, the citizen network for uh, monitoring the environment, particularly uh, environmental uh, variables and uh, uh, particle in there. We have been working devising uh, the, the, the station and in the middle of this uh, uh, set of projects, which is uh, the starting racimo funded by Frida, which is a regional fund. And then uh, we develop within the city the, the project uh, to measure the, the quality of air. And then uh, we uh, make uh, an, an startup to, to guarantee the sustainability of this project. And now we are working on the rural area of, uh, of uh, Bucaramanga. Uh, uh, and the next year we are going to move and we are going to, to be uh, uh, working with the Erasmus project called La Conga, uh, planting this experience in eight uh, 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 eight institution in four Latin American countries. Uh, the first uh, was moving from cosmic ray to weather station because we use a weather station within our detector in the, the cosmic ray detector. And uh, uh, we made this uh, initiative and we work with five uh, uh, schools within the city and we train uh, nine teachers and 48 students doing a citizen science project. Uh, we then uh, moved to Racimo Air and uh, we involved not only our university, but also the private company. And uh, we served to the mayor uh, of Bucaramanga and uh, another city which is close to, to Bucaramanga and also to the environmental authority, which is the area of Bucaramanga. Then we moved we raise awareness to the schools and teachers, and we got a professional low cost uh, weather station, a software platform, and uh, also a startup. Uh, uh. Then we move <clears throat> our experience to Astro Paramo. Astro Paramo is this idea to use uh, astrobiology and climate change physics to convince ourselves that the Earth is in a very special place in our galaxy. <clears throat> the idea, we have a, a joint uh, project with uh, uh, the uh, Munchen University, Max, uh, Ludwig Maxwellian uh, University of München, and they have this wonderful project, and we adapt that project to have this uh, science club within the rural part of uh, Bucaramanga. 
in the COVID uh, crisis, uh, we have to, uh, we cannot be there uh, and we have to use uh, WhatsApp and podcast to guide our students to use not only the, the kit to understand the climate change effect, but also these uh, uh, weather station that now we have there. And uh, finally, we are moving, uh, this is uh, our plan for the next year, in uh, the, the program. La Conga is an uh, Erasmus master program in physics with uh, 11 universities, two in France, one uh, in um, Germany, two in Peru, two in Ecuador, two in Colombia, and two in Venezuela. And uh, we have part design some uh, citizen science activity uh, within the program. And then the idea is to use our students to do, uh, to, to adopt one of each school in, the, in each country and to replicate our experience that we had uh, here in Bucaramanga in those countries. And that's it. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Luis. Very interesting and a reminder that if you have any questions, please write them in a Q&A and Luis will answer them. And uh, I think the first question in Q&A is to Andreniki and uh, Evgenia, whether any school could be involved. But maybe, Luis, you can also answer whether any school could be involved. Uh, and we're moving from Colombia to Belgium to Ghent, but we're still on the weather topic. Uh, and we'll have uh, Stephen uh, Kalvarts, uh, from Ghent University talking about Flinder, Flemish Weather Citizen Science Project. Thanks a lot for the, for the invitation. So I'm Steve Kallewert. Uh, I'm a meteorologist and I'm working at uh, Ghent University. And I'm also affiliated with the Royal Meteorological Institute of uh, Belgium. And I'm very happy to bring you uh, the story uh, of the Vlinder uh, project, which is a project investigating observational meteorological gaps with schools. And actually, this uh, citizen science project started from a scientific need. We, as meteorologists, as climate scientists, we needed data, data from very diverse environments. And today we have a lot of meteorological data, but they are all coming from rural uh, environments. And we also need information from cities, from lakes, from forests, and that was missing. And this information is needed um, in the context of climate adaptation where we know that we should understand very well the uh, interaction between land use, land cover, and the atmosphere. And for example, the urban heat island effect is very important. And we also need this data for a second reason. We have always more stronger computers for our weather forecast. So we are today able to run weather forecasts very high resolutions, resolutions with very detailed um, physics schemes. So we are able to make more local weather forecasts, but this also means that we need more local data, more local observations to evaluate these forecasts. So there was a strong scientific need for this data, but as a scientific team, it's very hard to set up this kind of uh, big networks in very diverse environments. So at the beginning of 2019, we decided to, um, to try to tackle this, uh, this challenge in a citizen science way. So in January 2019, we launched a call towards schools and we asked them to propose interesting measurement locations in their neighborhood. And the response from schools in Belgium was overwhelming. So we received more than 400 proposals from schools and we selected the 60 best locations. So the 60 most interesting locations from the scientific point of view were selected. And at these locations, schools and teachers and students, they have built and installed professional weather stations. And you see some, some images of these uh, installments over here. But of course, at that point, the collaboration with schools did not finish. So we collect a lot of data and the schools are using these data in their curriculum. They are investing, they are doing research with, with the data of the, of the weather stations. And they are also following up the measurements. So is, if there is a problem with one of the weather stations, it's, uh, it's the school who goes to the station and tries to solve the uh, problem. So since December 2019, our network is operational. We have 60 weather stations in very diverse uh, landscapes. So uh, at this slide, you can see a screenshot of the dashboard. So there is an online dash dashboard. You can follow up all the data in real time. So this is available to, to, uh, to anyone. And there is also an API 
so that it's very uh, easy to extract the data and to use the data for different applications. Um, and I selected on this uh, on this screenshot, I selected some station uh, some stations just to show you how diverse the locations are because that was our scientific need. So we, there is a station in the city center of uh, Brussels, one in the middle of a lake, one in the middle of a forest and so on. So it's really a unique network. And uh, for us scientists, this was really a missing piece of information in, in Belgium. And I would like to spend also one slide on what I consider as one of the main challenges in citizen science, and that's how to create a sustainable project, how to have a project that can that can continue. Because for example, in our situation, we got funding. Schools would like to continue. We would like to continue. So that's that's a very important challenge. How to how to do this. And um, actually, we solved this by gathering many partners and building a big consortium consisting of cities, of companies, and they are all supporting this project. And in this way, we will continue our citizen science project, and our measurements together with, uh, with schools. And these partners, they will also use all the data. And I would like to finish with four take home messages. Um, so I think, first of all, citizen science really creates novel scientific possibilities. Um, we built a network that would have been completely out of reach without the uh, help of citizen scientists, in our case, mainly schools. So that's very important. Schools are also very interested, a very enthusiastic partner for this kind of uh, projects. The fact that we have real-time open data creates a lot of new opportunities and makes it much easier to continue with this project because there are other users and other people interested. And I think, and that's a very important point, one should not underestimate the capacity that you need if you want to manage such a project. Because it's not only science. Uh, we, we are used to scientific projects, but in this kind of citizen science project, there is really a lot of work that should be done on the educational material that you develop for schools, on the communication that you have with all your stakeholders and the schools. So it's really, it's, it's challenging, but it's worth the effort, I would say, for, your, uh, for listening to my talk. Thanks a lot, Stephen. Excellent. And now we're moving to Czech Republic, to the city of Brno. And uh, Jerzy Marek from Masaryk University will talk about citizen and city science as next steps for open science. So over to you, Jerzy. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. I will share my screen. Just a moment. Please, can you see it? Yes. Yeah, perfect. So I prepared, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm really glad that I can be here. And I prepared a short presentation about, uh, basically I would say that it's kind of follow up of uh, my, uh, of the previous speaker, you know, when uh, we are uh, in the Czech Republic, we are now in the, uh, in the process that we are all really stabilizing these open science uh, strategies for universities and also at national level, you know? So uh, we are basically, we don't have so many infrastructure already built but we have a lot of people that want to build it finally, you know. So that that's creates an opportunity to uh, do it also uh, kind of innovatively, you know, and that's the goal that I would like to present uh, today. So um, the goals of the presentation is why uh, to do citizen and city science and why is the future of open science in our personal opinion, if I can say, and then show a uh, Brno use case, how we uh, are trying to create a system to work uh, together uh, with uh, another stakeholders. So uh, just short introduction. This is uh, my city when I, where I was born. Uh, it's uh, it's Brno. This is our cathedral, and uh, we are also uh, kind of we are small. We are big city to make innovation, but small city to to actually manage innovation. I would say, and there is a deep uh, cooperation also in popularization of science. This is, for example, our uh, Brno Observatory and Planetarium. Uh, to give you some uh, some um, ideas what Brno is, uh, we have approximately 400,000 inhabitants, 29 districts. That's funny, actually, if there is someone from London, you know, London has 35 districts, so we, but London is uh, inversely bigger than, than Brno. We have many students. We are the student city of the Czech Republic. We have six public universities. We have a strategy for attracting talents, Brno region and South Moravian Innovation Center for 15 years, basically, or more than 15 years, um, focus on innovation for, for uh, businesses, uh, academia, etc. 
and the important uh, sectors are space uh, industry and game industry and electron microscopy. We are uh, one fourth or one third of uh, global production of electron microscopy is from Brno. Then back to uh, my university, as I mentioned, we have six big public universities in Brno. Uh, our university is uh, Masek University that has 10 faculties, uh, 30,000 students, uh, many PhD students, etc. And uh, what's important now back to uh, the topic of open science, we have 10 faculties, one core team that, uh, that consists of five persons uh, that are dealing with the topic of open science. Uh, we have 33 open science contact persons already from the start of the, this year, 2020. And we have 14 open science advisors that consist from uh, manager, top managers of university and also top scientists from the university. So uh, this enable us uh, to build a new strategy that should be in place from 2022. And the main topics are open access and fair data, but but, and that's important that these advisors said, hey, if we are building it here now, basically in 2020, uh, we should include also citizen science, city science, etc. you know. So this is this is important thing uh, that is going on. Actually today uh, at one o'clock, uh, we are presenting with my, with my um, uh, colleague, we are presenting to these advisors what we have uh, come with uh, in practice, I would say, and I will show you this uh, in a moment. So uh, the basic question was, uh, why to do that, actually? Why, why to think about uh, citizen science as an important block of, uh, the, uh, of uh, open science? And uh, basically, a um, little bit about just one thing is that uh, there are a lot of universities, a lot of students, and the city of Brno has also uh, its own uh, city uh, no, scientific uh, public scientific officer, I would say, you know, so it's dedicated person uh, that is communicating with the universities about the topics that the universities are uh, have the problems or about sharing the research, you know, with the public sector. So from that, uh, from the discussion came this kind of picture that you have the scientist line and you have the public office line and there is also the private sector, but this is not important for this uh, kind of um, uh, discussion. Uh, for now. So as you can see, there are two things, you know, you are put opening science or you are making them uh, for the commercial purposes, you know, and if you put the open science as a, I would say, enabler, as an infrastructure, you know, for sharing, communicating and selling research in, in future. So they, uh, in, um, in this context, we think that uh, citizen science is important step, you know, in, in one of these branches. And it's important step also for the cities and policy officers to uh, do so-called science diplomacy. For example, that is what I know. Uh, it's very important also for the city of Barcelona. So uh, this is the Brno use case that we are trying to build basically in these days. And uh, we think about it in this way. On the left, you can see open science and universities where you have these research things and scientists, etc. On the other hand, you have citizen science, citizens basically that can be used for uh, helping researchers. But there is a huge gap, you know, between that, uh, at least at, uh, at Czech Republic, we got uh, always a uh, question. Yeah, I would like to uh, work with the citizens, you know, on some structured way, but we are not able to do that, you know, or we have uh, struggles to communicate with the citizens, you know. And we think here in, in Brno, or at least from the point of uh, our strategy, that the uh, enabler and stabilizer for that is the city, actually, you know, that we have to have a cooperation with the city to really enable our scientists to ask scientific questions to citizens and work with them. And back citizen scientists uh, or citizens interested in science ask questions, you know, to the scientists. You should uh, do research maybe there, you know, I find it interesting. Yes, no, etc. you know. So basically, create, as mentioned here, the knowledge transfer uh, through the city. You know, this is the whole idea about that. And that, in general, they think that this is the smart cooperation that we are trying to build. And uh, this is not just a scheme, I would say, uh, but uh, we have a very useful tool for that that was built by the public administration and it can be used for these practices, you know. And this is called Brno ID. As you can see, there's this important number here, you know, that already 166,000 people from the city of Brno or, or that are, for example, students that are visiting the city, uh, they already have this account, you know. So basically the big question of these days that we are, uh, that we are going to um, 
talk with the uh, city officials is to create a scientific module of this service, you know, where you have this number of already participants, you know, and to enable through the service, the communication between the research, you know, and citizens, you know, and this is the goal of coming months. I would say that hopefully in 2021, we will have a, we will have a, real um, i would say connection there is uh, already uh, on the technical level you know and there is already a cooperation between one of our institute of masaic university with the city of brno uh, there is a, a cooperation uh, that city of brno is paying uh, 100,000 euros, you know, it's a budgetary framework for asking uh, this institute about the exposum research, you know, uh, ideas for development of the strategy of the city of Brno. This is already done, it's from 2018. So based on this exhibit A example, so it's, uh, we are trying to stabilize it in the, into the, the environment. So just disclaimer, this is nothing that is said already. This is just an idea that we are developing, but uh, we are getting positive feedback from the part of the municipality office and also from the from the part of um, government of our uh, university. So basically, we are in the in the uh, in the situation that. Uh, it's all prepared, you know, the systems already worked, uh, the, the systems already uh, exist, you know, and now just connect them together. That's, that's what's going to be about uh, the 2021 for us. So with that, I leave you uh, and thank you for your attention. And uh, it would be very nice to be able to talk with you about your experience in hand in, in Belgium, uh, in, uh, in London, as mentioned yesterday, etc. cetera. And uh, yeah. So uh, thank you for uh, the possibility to be here and uh, looking forward for the discussion. Thanks a lot, Jerzy, and um, good luck with uh, yeah. your initiatives. Uh, and uh, we are coming to, to the close of uh, this meeting. And what you said, uh, I guess, was one of the reasons why we wanted to have this me meeting to share experiences and learn from each other. And I'm handing over to Inger for final words. Um... Yes, it has been uh, it has been two interesting days yesterday and today. And we uh, have heard uh, quite some things about citizen science, the different kind of citizen science, and that technology is, of course, a big driver uh, for citizen science because it's uh, technologically easier to to engage uh, citizens that way. So not only is citizen science gaining momentum in research, even in education, uh, citizen science uh, claims its seat, uh, even courses are set up, um, master's uh, degrees are being set up as we have heard yesterday. Uh, and, but however, it's only a minority of researchers at this moment that include or can even consider citizen science as a path in their research projects. Um, some have some cold feet to do that. Um, you have to be able to give a bit away of the control uh, you have as a researcher on your project. Uh, you have to believe in a participatory design of, uh, of your project, as you have heard throughout the two days. You have heard a lot about opportunities and challenges. So quite some opportunities, just to name a few, uh, engage students already at the uh, early stage in universities, engage uh, students of, uh, in schools, uh, very nice um, examples uh, here today, uh, but also for universities to involve your alumni. Uh, to strengthen the bond of alumni with their alma mater. This, uh, this uh, is also uh, stressed throughout the days. And of course, to engage with local communities. The university is embedded in a society, in a local community that they can, they can engage with. But of course, we mustn't be blind of the challenges that we have heard. One is about context, about more technological things like infrastructures or uh, legal barriers that um, citizen science projects face. Think about uh, privacy, think about, uh, think about copyright issues. Um, also, there is uh, the appreciation of citizen science in, in research projects. Um, how is it rewarded, evaluated, just appreciate it, just an appreciation even with a small budget uh, to do a project. And there is a question of including citizen science in the university's uh, strategic context, context. So these are a few things to, to we have to work with uh, for the future. 
But of course, citizen science is also about uh, social relevance. Um, we have heard different uh, uh, examples of how these citizen science projects uh, involve citizens, show them that uh, research is not something normative, but it is a process that people are involved in where you doubt, where you create new ideas and where you talk to each other and there is collaboration. And it showed in, uh, also today that the involvement of the city, the city council, uh, as an enabler, uh, as a mediator, as, uh, and getting involved in this project is uh, certainly a surplus, a, a quite a good thing uh, to, to enable all these kind of projects. And a very important, you need an exchange in these projects, not one directional, um, we want this from you and that's it <laughs> kind of thing. So um, there, there's a lot of opportunities, some challenges to tackle. Uh, we heard like with the examples of open air, how open science can enable citizen science um, with data management, infrastructure, uh, communication channels, um, uh, skills and training needs uh, can, be, uh, can be tackled within an open science context. Again, here we hear some challenges about sustainability, which is a really uh, a crucial question, of course, um, like many projects, um, some of these projects are limited in time and then it stops. And how do you keep uh, schools engaged? How do you keep citizens engaged? So a lot of interesting stuff over the last two, two days that we heard. Now we will follow up on this, of course, within the open air community, uh, with open science, we uh, work together with citizen science projects, see how infrastructures can support what they, uh, what they do. In uh, EUA uh, context, uh, for example, EUA has provided policy input on the new uh, European research area. Uh, this was just renewed uh, by the European Commission and the EUA member states, where they continue to build a common uh, European research and, and innovation landscape with a broader vision for the new European research area um, with deepening existing priorities and objectives. And their um, EUA has provided policy input, as I said, uh, um, with, uh, including the need to support, incentives, incentivize and reward citizen science. So uh, EUA calls on the Commission and the EU member states to work with universities and provide the necessary support and develop adequate, adequate uh, incentives and, and rewards. So uh, certainly to sum up, this uh, is a very interesting um, uh, evolution in research that we see in the last uh, 20, 30 years, even began uh, in, in the 80s, uh, as we heard yesterday. So a lot of follow up for us, for every one of us. I hope you enjoyed these two day, days that you have uh, seen quite some opportunities to work with. And uh, thank you for joining us these two days. We will send you a follow up mail with links to the recordings, to the presentations and the feedback form. We'd be very happy if you give, uh, could give us some feedback uh, on these two days. Um, we will write a blog about it. So. Um, well, I hope you keep tuned and uh, that you follow up on the citizen science projects that you heard of today. Thanks a lot again for your cooperation and uh, hope to see you in next time. Goodbye. <laughs>